Hello everybody and welcome to my updated version about the table of contents in Bricks Builder without any plugin. Um, I have changed the whole source code from jQuery to vanilla JavaScript because Bricks doesn't load jQuery anymore and you kind of should see a real performance boost if you don't use jQuery anymore. Um, I have also adapted the, the code to make it compatible with the smaller DOM in Bricks 1.4. So you shouldn't face any issues when 1.4 will be released. Um, yeah, the table of contents, um, it's pretty much the same to set up. I will show you in a minute how to set it up. But before I want to <laughs> introduce to you um, my new uh, a child team which is available on github you can download that for free um, just hit here that code button and hit download zip um, for those of you who aren't very familiar with coding um, it's an easier solution to make those elements available because you don't have to worry about all that source code anymore um, it gets registered by default you just have to download that theme and install it like you would do with a normal theme um, make sure to have bricks activated but um, the rest is pretty straightforward and it doesn't add anything by default to your website you have to load those files manually but the part where you load that files gets pretty simple with that child team so um, with that being said i just show you how to set it up and um, I will show you then how you can um, use those files with the new child team. So um, yeah, and that's what I forgot <laughs> to mention. I've also um, reworked the website with the tutorials. So um, it should be easier to find stuff and it should be easier to follow those tutorials because I now have done a complete step-by-step -step guide with pictures and screenshots where you can easily follow that tutorial. It's basically the same as in the video, but if you like to follow it slowly or more slowly, then you can use that. So let's create a new site, which I will call table of contents. And you don't need to do much to make it work, but I will have to do a little setup because we will need some um, some headings to yeah kind of have something um, where the table of contents can scratch, uh, scratch that content from. Um, I just design here some different um, tags so you can see um, how it will work. Yeah, so let's leave it so. Um, all you need to do is um, just creating a container. So aside from that container here on the right side, let's, let's um, say that we want to have our table of contents here on the left side. Um, and what you need to do is just um, yeah, add a container and give it um, an ID. And that ID could be everything you would like to. So I just call it my TUC. Um, you probably want to have a heading here which says, um, for example, table of contents. Um, there is an option available to skip certain elements, so, um, but I'm gonna show you that later. Um, so for now, just um, the information that, the, that this is available. Um, what you need to do now is um, head over to the site and here you can see there is the option skip elements which i'm going to show you um, but to initialize the table of content all you need to do is just copy that um, code um, paste it in a code block and the cool thing about the child team is that you don't have to worry about where to place that code um, all you need to do is um, copy and paste it and it um, it does the job for itself. So it automatically gets um, um, registered in the footer so you don't have to worry about anything. Um, there is also a CSS file available for the table of contents. You don't need to um, use that line of code. 
Um, if you want to style um, that by yourself, you can look up the classes here on the, on the or it's also available here at full source code. Um, so here you can see all those classes. Those classes are auto-generated. So for each um, HTML tag um, you are using inside your table of contents, you will get um, a class which will look like that. So you could style that by your own and um, you could also style that um, indicator for your own, uh, by your own. But if you want to have that pre-built um, example, you would need to use that line of code too. So if you want to style it yourself, just remove that line. If not, um, leave it as it is. Um, the table of content takes some options you have to pass. The first one is the ID of that container. So we have assigned here an ID of my TOC, um, which, you, which should match here. So that's what you need to pass. And then there is also an option for the, um, for the tags you want to include in your um, table of contents. So it's just an array. You can pass here every uh, HTML tag you would like to. Um, so you could also add a link, for example, by using A, um, but I'm just doing it here with some headings. And there is also an option for highlighting, which is basically here those uh, that small indicator um, where you can set which um, which tags should be highlighted when they scroll into view. Um, I have decided to, for example, don't highlight those headings here, so it will stay by step by step guide and when I keep on scrolling, it skips to options and um, parameters. Um, that's helpful because you can here really say which elements to highlight. Um, so let's just hit execute code and view it on the front end. And there you can see here we have, it doesn't make any sense in terms of semantic, but um, here we have some different headings. And of course the indicator doesn't work because they are all here um, in, in viewport. So if we want to adapt that, maybe we have to um, assign here a, a different height of, I don't know, let's say 75 view height and let's repeat that step. And yeah, that should be enough. So let's set that one here to position sticky. And as you can see while I'm scrolling, yeah, I think it's the wrong tag, but yeah, you, you, you know what I mean. So um, if you don't want to have that scroll indicator here, um, you just have to leave out that option. So that highlight option is responsible for um, highlighting and also for using that um, scroll trigger option, I would call it. So if you just leave that out, as you can see, it doesn't do anything by default. You can also, of course, change those tags um, to whatever you would like to, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, as you can see, that's what I mentioned before with the skipping class, we have here um, the table of contents heading and the code automatically adds also that as a heading for the table of contents, which you probably don't want to have because you don't want to have it duplicated. Um, what you can do here to avoid that behavior is um, using that class here, as you can see in the documentation at the point skip elements, um, using that class here of WCD underscore table of contents underscore skip. So um, just assign it here and then it isn't included anymore in the table of contents. Yeah, that's everything I have to say about table of contents. Um, if you're facing any issues or have any questions, just let me know and enjoy building the element.